Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Natea and this is Nesthetics. This video is a vlog plus get ready with me to go see Black Panther Wakanda Forever and it's also a review of the movie. If you only want to see the review, you can click the timestamp below, but if you want to see the vlog and get ready with me, you can keep on watching. So this is my outfit. I wore a Wakanda Forever shirt. And then I also wore this skirt. Well, I turned it into a skirt. As you can see, like it's, it's, it's something I used to hang up on my wall. Actually, I got it from Senegal some years ago, but I turned it into a skirt with some giraffes on it. Uh, got these earrings and I also got these bracelets from Senegal as well when I went some years ago. And this is the full outfit later on. I took a mirror pic in the bathroom of the movie theater and the outfit really came together, especially for the 71 degree weather that day because it's like 30 degrees now and that was the last warm day. So that that outfit was perfect for that day and now I'm doing my makeup I put sunscreen on before starting my makeup and just remember to put y'all sunscreen on y'all all year round wear sunscreen at least I'm gonna be wearing it all year round because my skin is sensitive to the sun so I have to wear sunscreen and this was the final makeup look I really liked how the eyeshadow Paired with my outfit, I wanted to get it as closely, the color as closely to my outfit. And I think my makeup turned out really good. And then here we go for the scents. So I got these scents from a black owned business called Me and My. It's called Pussy Whipped. Um, yeah. And you just put these like on your neck and on your pressure points and stuff like that. And I got some other ones too. Another one is called Bomb Kitty. And another one is called Squirter. I mean, if y'all want to buy them, this is not a sponsor. I'll put the link in the description box because they sure do be having people pussy whipped. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, then we got the fairy tale. Um, we got the fairy tale perfume from Bath and Body Works. And that's my main perfume I'm putting on because, you know, so I'm a fairy tale. Hey, y'all. So I just made it to Cracker Barrel and it's literally two o'clock. Hopefully it's not awake. Um, Cracker Barrel is only like five minutes from the movie theater. So and the movie starts at 330. So I should be able to get in here, get me a meal and do all of that. Um, usually when I go and eat by myself, I like write and stuff. So I'm going to take in my journal with me. So, yeah, I'm ready to eat because I haven't eaten all day. So, yeah, let's go into Cracker Barrel. Not going to lie to y'all. Cracker Barrel was so disappointing and I'm gonna get to that a little bit more in the next clip so I'm not gonna talk about it too much right now but as you can see I'm here writing in my journal. I love taking myself out on solo dates and taking my journal or my notebook with me just to sit there and write and reflect as I wait for my food because like if I'm taking myself on a date I'm spending time with myself and I wouldn't just want to be there scrolling on my phone because I don't even like to do that so I really love taking my journal or a notebook and just spending time with myself to reflect. And as of the day, the day that I'm doing this voiceover, it's day 88 of me journaling consistently every day. And I really enjoy journaling every day. And it's allowed me to become a better writer, to articulate my thoughts and feelings better, to become more emotionally intelligent. So if anybody's thinking about getting into writing and journaling, I definitely recommend it. But now let's get into this nasty food at Cracker Barrel. I'm just trying to figure out what the French toast is this because I always get the mama's French toast breakfast and this is not what it used to look like. It don't even look appealing. Like, it wasn't even that good. Hey y'all, so it is three o'clock um, and I'm done eating at Cracker Barrel already. I love going out by myself because every time I go out to eat by myself it'd be quick in and out in and out at first i was a little worried because when i got in there it took them like 10 15 minutes just to come ask me you know for a drink usually when you sit down you know maybe a few minutes go by and they'd be like okay what you want to drink i'm waiting 15 minutes ain't nobody even asked me what you know what i want to drink so i asked the lady who sat me down i'm like is anybody gonna come you know ask for what i want and I don't know if it was because I was sitting by myself or they thought I was waiting for other people, but it's just like, come on, like. But it went really fast. I put my order in right away because I already knew what I wanted. I always get the same things when I come to Cracker Barrel, but I hadn't been here in like two years. Um, I came here on my 22nd birthday, I think, with my parents. And 
Cracker Barrel didn't change. Like, I was so disappointed for not having Cracker Barrel in, like, so long, either, like, a year or two, because I might have had it one time in the past year. I don't think so. I actually think it's been, like, two years, for real. For me to not have had Cracker Barrel in a minute, you know, when you ain't had something in a minute and then you get it again, you like, oh, this going to be good. I was disappointed. Like, the food was okay, but it was different. Like the mama's french toast breakfast like that i always have always got it it was different the bread was different the eggs looked different the sausage looked different i didn't even eat the sausage because it didn't taste good so you know it it it'll do you know it'll do it'll it'll satisfy me for now but you know i was so looking forward to going to cracker barrel today for my solo date and it ended up not even living up to my expectations so i probably won't be back here in like two more years <laughs> but you know it's three o'clock so i'm gonna head to the movie theater luckily it's only five minutes away movie starts at 3 30. i don't know if i'll get popcorn or not because the movie is two hours and 41 minutes definitely going to use the bathroom you know don't want to have to get up um during the movie but yeah so i'm so excited to see the movie today and i will probably give y'all a review not right after when i get back home but like the review gonna be on a different day because i want to watch like the youtubers new rock stars and all the stuff that they easter eggs that they find i want to watch that first before i actually give my review but i heard the movie was good so i'm excited to see it I feel like the movie is longer because, you know, they had to add in, like, Chadwick's or the Black Panther's death. Um, I don't know if the movie would have actually been this long if they didn't have to include that. But I'm excited to see the movie. I feel like it's going to tug at all of my emotions. But I'm super, super, super excited. So, yeah, let's head to the movie theater so we can do all the things we need to do and get seated and watch the movie. Because... I was like, I'm finna see the movie on the first day, on Thursday, 3.30. Cause those, those were the earliest times, like three o'clock, 3.30. I had class until 1.30. So I'm like, you know what, let's do it 3.30, come right here and let's see this movie. So let's go see the movie. So we are back for the review and I'm gonna be looking at my phone cause I have notes. And I just wanna say this movie was an 11 out of 10. I absolutely love love loved every bit of this movie i am going to be giving my review and i'm going to try to stay in chronological order um so that you know it doesn't get all boggled up but yeah 11 out of 10 this movie it jumps right into the mix like we jump right into t'challa's death we see shuri she says like this little prayer to boss and she's like please let my brother you know like make it through let him be okay and then we see that like T'Challa doesn't make it um and like I have forgot my tissues and I'm just like this movie is already finna make me cry and make me emotional I love the way that they honored Chadwick in the Marvel intro just by showing all the different pictures of him within like the Marvel uh lettering and all of that I just love the intro that honored Chadwick and yeah from the beginning of the movie I was just like okay I'm I'm ready to cry. <laughs> I'm ready to cry now. I wish we could have seen Chadwick in the movie, but I understand that the the movie wasn't didn't begin filming before he passed and you know we did get to see like old footage of him from the first black panther in the movie but i was hoping that chadwick was gonna show up i was like do they got footage of him you know did he film anything but you know i really wanted to see him in the film but we did see him but just you know older footage of him and he was definitely there in the film in spirit i like how the movie it mirrors how Chadwick died in real life like they mirrored T'Challa's death off of Chadwick's death in real life and how in the movie T'Challa died from an illness that they didn't know that he had and I think that it was it was a good way the movie did a good job of celebrating Chadwick's life and especially like the funeral scene I remember some people were saying they were gonna wear white to the movie i personally did not wear white i just went to wear what i want to wear but i did see some people in there wearing white um and i just loved the way that they celebrated t'challa's death and it was like a celebration and i just think the way that the black community like grieves and honors its people 
uh like at funerals i think it's just unmatched like it's so different like i really feel like we grieve and we celebrate different and i really believe that the death of chadwick boseman hit the black community differently compared to other people like black people we have this unrelated fictive kinship where like even if we not related to this black person this famous black person we still feel like that's our kin and that's why like when black people die from like police violence like it hits us so hard because we see ourselves in them and i really feel like the black community connected with chadwick through his different roles and just connected with him as a person so his death really hit the black community hard and like it's still surreal thinking that he's actually has has passed so i really love the way that this film honored chadwick now I want to talk about Namor and the people of Talokan. Okay, uh, Namor and the people of Talokan, Talokan showed us that they were not people to play with. So when we first got introduced to them and they like were attacking the U.S. ship, the ship that had found like vibranium under the sea, and then the people of Talokan they started um making them sounds, that music, and then people started jumping off the ship. I'm like, oh. So y'all know how to put people in sonic hypnosis. I'm like, oh, so this is what we on. This is the people of Talo Khan. I said, okay. Um, so the Talo Khan people and they more pulled up and they was like, yeah, we nothing to play with. And we see that with throughout the movie too. And I personally like Namor as an antagonist, as an anti-hero. I think a, a good antagonist is always relatable and he is definitely relatable because like he wanted to be allies with the wakandans and he's just like you know your country has a history of struggle like your people and my people do too and like i agree like they got that connection and the similarities and they more he he wanted to be allies not enemies but he was like you got to choose one or the other <laughs> you either gonna be my ally or you're gonna be my enemy <laughs> and he wasn't playing and I like how we got like a little introduction of Namor's origin story and actually learning how he got the name Namor, which means without love. So I thought that was interesting, but I, I kind of feel like by the end of the movie, he would, he kind of had some love in him, maybe, maybe, but I'm not sure. So I just think his name is interesting as well and just his whole like origin story. I, I'm, I'm glad we got to get to know him a little bit more. Um, and I also love the introduction of Ironheart. Um, it just like was given nostalgic vibes, especially when she came out with her Ironheart suit. And it was, you know, I was just thinking about Tony Stark, I repeat him and Iron Man and just like his suits. And I'm just like, and I, I've read like Ironheart's origin story. And I know like we didn't get her, like her origin story, like in this film and like how she became Ironheart. I don't even think they actually called her Ironheart in this film. You know, they just called her by her real name. But um, yeah, I loved her suit and I loved the introduction of Ironheart in this movie. And now I wanna talk about uh, how Namor came in and flooded Wakanda. So when Namor and the people of Talokan came and flooded Wakanda, I was like, whoa. I was like, whoa. I'm like, y'all just coming up in here and, and just gonna flood the whole place, huh? And I think the representation of water is so interesting because like, if you think about African diaspora culture, like water has been so symbolic in our culture in so many ways. Like if you think about how enslaved black people, they jumped off ships into the Atl Atlantic Ocean, which is the ocean that they was coming out of and the ocean that they was battling on. Enslaved black people in real life jumped out of ships into the Atlantic Ocean because they would rather be dead than in bondage. And that goes back to like the quote that Killmonger says in the first uh, Black Panther movie, like, bury me in the ocean with my ancestors that jumped from the ships because they knew death was better than bondage. Um, so I think water is symbolic in that way with the Atlantic Ocean. And then you also think about um natural disasters and like hurricane katrina and how these disasters have negatively and uh, impacted black people so it's just like water has been very symbolic within the african diaspora so i just thought the symbolism of water was interesting and then queen ramonda angela bassett like i was not expecting her to die i was just like i was like I 
know she not finna die. I was like, I know she not finna die. I mean, granted, like, she was probably gonna die, like, regardless of T'Challa's death. T'Challa's death basically was added probably because of, you know, Chadwick Boseman. So, if that hadn't been a factor, I'm sure Ramonda, Queen Ramonda was gonna die. But I'm just like... That was another part of the movie where I was just ready to cry. I was like, not Angela Bassett, not Queen Ramonda. And it's like Namor had threatened Queen Ramonda earlier. And he was like, I'll kill you and I'll kill Shuri. If you ain't got my money on my bud, I'm killing you and him. So when Queen Ramonda died, I was so done. And I was, I was ready to cry again. They were trying to resuscitate her. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, she gone. And then, like, you see Shuri go through all of this grief. Like, she lost her brother. She lost her, her mother now. And, like, previously she lost her father. Like, um, so it's like she didn't lost all these people. And this grief and this, just her losing her family really, like, it's ultimately what sets the fire under her to replicate the heart-shaped herb and become the Black Panther. So we see that and so when Shuri becomes the Black Panther and she goes to the ancestral plane <laughs> and we see Killmonger, he's like, hey little cousin. I was like, come on girl. <laughs> I was like, Killmonger, bye. Like, no, not no hey little cousin. I was so shocked to see Killmonger, but I was actually kind of happy to see him. He's a good antagonist as well. As I say, all good antagonists are relatable. And Killmonger was relatable in what, you know, he was striving to do in the first Black Panther. But I was so surprised to see him. And at first I thought, oh, we finna get a cameo from T'Challa, Chadwick Boseman, you know. But, you know, we didn't get that. We got Killmonger. So... I think that she did need to see Killmonger in the ancestral plane. Because she needed to encompass some of his energy. He was like, you gonna handle business like I would or what you gonna do? So I feel like she needs to see Killmonger to also continue to light that fire under her butt in order to really go out there and attack Namor and protect Wakanda. Um, and you can see that she was encompassing Killmonger's energy for a minute because I thought she was going to kill Namor at first but she actually ended up encompassing Killmonger's uh energy and also like T'Challa and Queen Ramonda's energy because it's like you know that vengeance part of Killmonger she used that to to get Namor and get him away from water to make him weak and then did y'all see when they was fighting she chopped that ankle and you know that's where a lot of his strength is, Namor. So I'm like, oh, she got that ankle. She know what she doing. So, you know, she used that vengeance energy from Killmonger to do all of that. And then also, like, when she when she had the sword in her, for a second I thought, okay, sure, he finna go out too. Ryan Coogler, you better, better not. You better not. And I was like, okay, she ain't died as good. She pulled it out of her. And she was about to kill uh, Namor. But then Queen Ramonda came to her and she was like, okay, let's just talk to him, make him yield, and we good. So, I'm happy that she encompassed, like, both of their energies. And, um, just, like, last thoughts. I like how this movie encompasses, like, two different cultures. Like, the Mesoamerican culture from Namor. And then also the African diasporic cultures. And it's interesting how these are two nations of color. And they were fighting against each other. Both nations, as Namor was talking to Shuri in the, during the movie, how both of their nations, historically, their people have been oppressed. And it's just, like, now y'all, like fighting against each other and it's just like y'all have more similarities than differences and y'all need to just you know come together and i don't know if i necessarily trust namor at this point because whoever the the woman was that came to him at the end she was just like you know basically the namor like so you just gonna yield like you know why ain't you handle business type stuff and he was like you know when we go to war or whatever wakanda will be our ally and they will they will protect talo khan I feel like the woman probably wouldn't, she probably ain't believe that. But I don't know. I hope Namor 
you know, is actually an ally now and it's not gonna be any more of a villain. But I don't know, I still, I'm still side-eyeing him. I don't know if I can completely trust him or not. Um, so yeah, that's basically like what I, all the things that I really liked about the movie. And then the very little things that are like kind of unrelated to the, the script and stuff that I liked about the movie. M'Baku, like M'Baku's comedy, like he was comedic in the first movie too, but I really like M'Baku's comedy and Ironheart gave some comedy as well, but M'Baku is funny, like <laughs> I love like the insertion of the, the different like comedic relief of M'Baku. And then I also liked how it was a positive representation of Haiti, because we see uh, them go to Haiti and you know on TV they don't never show Haiti like that. So I'm happy that Ryan Coogler and whoever else showing Haiti in a positive light because we don't ever get to see Haiti in a positive light. And Haiti, if it was actually filmed in Haiti, it looks so beautiful. And I just love that representation of Haiti and also Haitians. Um, and then also the introduction of T'Challa's son, Toussaint. And I was like, oh my goodness. Like, So basically this is like... You know, T'Challa's legacy is going to continue on. You know, maybe Tucson will become the Black Panther eventually. I thought Tucson was a very fitting name, especially in history. You know, Tucson was the name of the Haitian Revolution leader. And then the, the little boy that played Tucson, he was just so adorable. So I'm excited to see what comes next of all of that. And also, Angela Bass's arms. I need the workout routine because every movie that Angela Bassett has been in, her arms have always been so toned and so good. Like, I remember I first saw her arms and what, what's love got to do with it when she played Tina Turner. Angela Bassett's arms are always just so toned. I need the workout routine. I need the, I need the upper body workout because Angela Bassett's arms are just always, always slay. Always. So... That was off topic, but it's just like, I, I need the, the workout routine. And also Michaela Cole, I love the addition of her. Uh, I really enjoy her work as a screenwriter, as a filmmaker. I've watched her work um, over the years, Chewing Gum, and also I May Destroy You, which is on HBO Max. Um, and I really enjoy her shows and her, her ability as a screenwriter. So I love the addition of her in this uh you know, franchise, the Marvel franchise now. And Ryan Coogler, Angela Bassett, Letitia Wright, they all need their flowers. They all need all the awards, the Oscars. They need everything. I love the way that they wrote this story. It was such a good story. And I can just imagine, like, you know, they had to rewrite this story after Chadwick's death. And Ryan Coogler probably imagined the story in a different way. And then he had to rewrite it, go back to the to the plan board. And, you know, so I, I just admire Ryan Coogler's work. And just like everything that he's been a part of, like as a producer, a writer, a director, he's always done good. Like the Creed movies, Fruitvale Station, Judah and the Black Messiah. He was a producer. Like everything it seems like Ryan Coogler touches, like he is gold. It's golden. He needs his awards. I feel like he needs to, to get the GOAT status at this point because he did a really good job directing this movie and he did a really good job with this story. Now, the only critique I would have, I would say I have about this movie, I did not like the soundtrack. Like, the first Black Panther soundtrack goes hard. And maybe I'm biased because I love Kendrick Lamar and he's the one that was really, you know, over that project or that, that soundtrack. But the soundtrack just was not hidden for this movie. And for me personally, I just d don't really like Rihanna singing ballads. That's just not not my favorite thing. Um, I think she did a good job, but it's just not like I wouldn't I wouldn't listen to it. But I, I will say that like I do like that the soundtrack is more like representative representative of the African diaspora and also the Mesoamerican culture because if you actually look on like Spotify or anywhere else 
you will see all the songs and they have like people like Tim's and Burner Boy, uh, Toby Nwigwe, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name right, right, but they have people from across the African diaspora on the soundtrack and then they also have some songs that are titled in Spanish. So it's like, I like how the the soundtrack does represent like the different cultures and and represents the movie well, but it's just like, it don't hit like the first, <laughs> it don't hit like the first movies. Like it just, it just don't. So yeah, I think that's, that's it. That's it. I absolutely love this movie and um, I'm definitely going to go see it again. I don't know when I'm going to go see it again because like that's like three hours of my time I gotta <laughs> I gotta spend to go see this movie again I uh, just gotta make sure I have time to do that but yeah I absolutely love this movie 11 out of 10 11 out of 10 uh, let me know your thoughts about the movie in the comment section below and if you made it this far in the video thank you for watching and I will see y'all in my next one bye